let's say we have a model for users and a user has many phones and a phone belongs to a user. So a web application may look something like this where we have our users and their email. Then we show the total number of phones. And when we look at them, we can see each one of the phones with the associated name for that phone. And with the Rails application, you have two good choices as well as a few others for rendering your JSON for your API, Active Model Serializer and JBuilder. With Active Model Serializer, it separates its own serialization concerns into a separate folder and separate files that will render out the JSON, whereas the JBuilder is more kind of like a view extension where you would have your HTML files as well as the JBuilder extension files. And I do like JBuilder. I think it is a uh, pretty good implementation. However, today we're going to look at Active Model Serializer. And we're going to look at this gem over the JBuilder simply because within a Rails API, you don't have views and I do like the object oriented approach of Act Model Serializer. If you are using a full blown Rails application, not just the API module, then you can use JBuilder natively as it is included by default. However, you can also use Active Model Serializer with it as well. So to get started, add Active Model Serializer to your gem file. Be sure to run bundle and restart your Rails application. Similar to your application controller inheriting from the action controller base, and the application record inheriting from active record base, I'm going to create a new folder called serializers. Then I'll create a file within there called application serializer. And this will inherit from the active model serializer. And I like using the application serializer because this will give us a chance to dry up some of our other serializers by putting in some common code within here. For example, in our application today, we're going to use a few different lines. First, we'll include the Rails application routes URL helpers so we can get access to the URLs within the API. And then I'm also going to set the default URL options host to our API.demo.dev. And the reason why I'm setting this here is because because within our main application, if we are using a hybrid where we have views, but then we also have this whole API end, then we want to set a different URL host for our APIs. So for our API users controller, you'll see for our index action, the only thing that we're adding is the each serializer, and then we're referencing the user serializer. For our show action, we just have serializer user serializer. And for the show action, you really don't have to specify the serializer as it'll by default just look for the user serializer. However, with it being namespaced, and if you have any other kind of weird situations where you have a different naming structure, then you are able to specify it like this. And with our serializer, we're just declaring a class called user serializer. And again, this is under the serializers folder. And this will inherit from our application serializer. And if we want to specify certain attributes for displaying, then we can just call attributes and then pass in a array of our attributes. So in our case, we'll display the ID, the first name and the last name. And from within your terminal at the root of your Rails application, you can also generate a serializer by typing in Rails generate serializer and then pass in the model name of your object. In our case, we'll generate the phone. And you'll see that this will automatically create under your app serializers folder the phone serializer.rb file. So the first thing I would typically do is rename the active model serializer to the application serializer. And then I'll also pass in the attributes that I want to display. So in our case, just the name and phone number. And if we navigate to our user's API path, you'll see that we're returned a JSON array with the ID, first name, and last name of each one of our users. So typically you'll want to have something a bit more complicated than this. So for example, if you want to have a custom record called show, then this show you want to render out what the user show partial would look like, then you're able to do something like that by just adding in show and then defining the method. So here we can call the users controller dot render. We can call our show partial or the show action, and then we can pass in assigns, which will set the instance variable of user to the object, which the object is is the user record that got passed into the serializer. We'll call layout false, so we're not rendering out the whole layout, and then call squish to kind of compress it all into one line. 
So going back to our application, we can refresh the page and now you'll see that we have the show key here and it'll pass in the show partial. And the DSL for Active Model Serializer is very similar to that of Active Record, where if we want to display associations, for example, if we want to display the phone numbers for each one of our users, then we can call has many phones. And this will then create a subarray of our phone numbers. So we're refreshing our view again. You then see that we have another key called phone, and it's an array of each one of the phone numbers. While we won't be covering authentication in this episode, let's say you have a scenario where you only want to display the email address in the API if the user is currently logged in. And with device, if a user is authenticated, we could call something like this where if current user and this attribute would only be displayed in that case. And we can create other attributes if we need to. And so for this example, we're going to look at the edit link, which is just an attribute name that will correspond to a method. So if we create our method edit link, we can pass in the edit user URL and then pass in the object, which again, the object is the record of the user. And we can go further by displaying this link only if the current user is the object. So we can create another method, current user is owner. And then we can create this method, the current user is owner. And notice that we are using scope, and that is the by default with Active Model Serializer, the current user object. So we're just checking to see if the current user is equal to the user. So coming back to the application, if we refresh the page, you'll see that we now have an edit link. If we refresh a page for a non-authenticated user, you'll see that no link is generated. If we go to a separate user, so this is user one, we'll skip over to user two. You'll see that because we are still authenticated, we can see the email. However, the edit link no longer appears because the user that we are currently authenticated with is not this user. So again, we're not going to cover in this episode today how you can authenticate with the user because that's going to be a whole episode in itself where we look at either creating a user with a username and password and then pass a authentication token on each request or you can create a API token for the user and then have that token known to the application and then that pass through on each request. And really, depending on how you're constructing your application, you may choose one approach versus another. So definitely check out the README documentation because it does cover a lot of different options like using different adapters, caching, logging, and deserialization. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.